Okay, so for the mean, we have two kinds of confidence interval when sigma is known. Uh, if I give you population standard deviation, you're gonna use Z formula, but if I don't give you population standard deviation and I give you sample standard deviation, then you're gonna use T formula. Okay, I'm gonna wait for your questions after covering seven three and seven four. What is confidence interval for proportion? And what is sample size for proportion? 7.3. Uh, recall that uh, um, in the previous uh, chapter 6.31, we talk about proportion. Proportion is the percentage of the group uh, that belong to the category that we are interested in. Uh, uh, population proportion is P, uh, sample proportion is P hat, P hat is equal to X over N, is complement Q hat is one minus P hat, uh, N is the sample size, and X is the number sample, is the number of sample units uh, that possess the characteristic of our interest. As I mentioned, N is the sample size. What is the confidence interval for proportion? You always read confidence interval from the middle. P, which is population proportion, is less than P hat, sample proportion, plus Z sub alpha over two times the square root of P hat times Q hat over N. And Again, I'm gonna go back to the middle of the formula. P is larger than P hat minus Z sub alpha over two times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. The product of Z sub alpha over two and the radical is a marginal error. <clears throat> N times P hat must be greater than or equal to five. N times Q hat must be greater than or equal to five. Okay, this formula is similar to the formula that I gave you for mu in section 7.1 and in terms of Z sub alpha over two and the formula that I gave you in 7.2 regarding mu in terms of T sub alpha over two. Uh, first of all, there are some assumptions. The samples have to be selected randomly and uh, <clears throat> we must round the marginal error uh, here to three decimal places. Okay, I heard that there are some confusion about the answer key that I have given you uh, with what you are doing. The answer key that I have given you, uh, Z sub alpha over two in section six point, in section seven point one, I rounded. Z sub alpha over two to two decimal places, and T sub alpha over two, I think, in with three decimal places, okay? <clears throat> and um, so when you are checking your answer to my answer, look at the PowerPoint and see how many decimal places I rounded the Z, the T, okay? Section 6.7.1Z, section 7.2 to T. And compare your answer. You may round your answer to four decimal places, okay? Any question? Okay, let's look at the example. A U.S. travel data center's SRS of 1,500 adults found 42% of respondents stated that they favor historical site for vacation. <clears throat> Find the 95% confidence interval of true proportion of all adults who visiting a historical site for vacation. <clears throat> okay, let's see what I have given you. First of all, what is our parameter? Parameter is measure of population. 
what kind of measure of population I'm talking about in this example. Proportion. You have in this chapter, or overall, we have four measures of population that we are interested in. Four measures of population. Proportion. Mean. Sorry, uh, four, uh, we are in this chapter and previous chapters, we are interested on four measures of population parameters. One is mean, one is proportion, one is variance, one is the standard deviation. Four measures of population parameters. So the parameter here is proportion, P. So sample size 1500. Here, P hat is 42%. Because out of those 1,500 adults, only 42% responded, and they said they favor historical. So that's sample proportion. So P hat is 0.42, and Q hat, which is the complement of P hat, is 1 minus uh, P hat, 1 minus 0.42. 0.58, okay? N times P, 1500 times 0. 0.42 is 630, bigger than five. You remember we said N times <laughs> P hat has to be larger than or equal to five. The same thing when N Q. N times Q hat, 1500 times 0. 0.58, 870, that's larger than five. So our assumptions are okay. Or our conditions, our conditions are okay. And we have a random sample here, SRS. <clears throat> so, now since um, I'm finding confidence interval for proportion, do you remember P was less than P hat plus Z sub alpha over two times rat P hat Q hat over N. So I need alpha to find Z sub alpha over two. Alpha is one minus confidence level, 0 0.95. 0 0.95 is confidence level. So alpha is one minus confidence level, 0 0.05. Z sub alpha over two is inverse norm of one minus alpha over two. Inverse norm of one minus 0.05 over two. And that is 1.96. Let me share my screen with you. I'm gonna stop sharing and show you my calculator. So you had, uh, we go to uh, where is inverse norm? You go to distribution. Second words gives you distribution. Inverse norm is item number three. One minus 0 0.05 divided by two. Okay. Mu is zero, sigma is one. We pick left tail. 1.96. Any question? Okay. So here is the formula for confidence. That's the confidence interval formula for proportion P. Okay. Uh, let's find marginal error. Okay, so let's find, I always find the marginal error for any uh, confidence interval. So marginal error is Z sub alpha over two times rat P hat Q hat over N. And this formula is given to you in the formula sheet. During the exam, you can have the formula sheet and I'm gonna email you a handout regarding the procedure of finding Z sub alpha over two, T sub alpha over two, and whatever I will cover in the next section, chi square right and left. I will 
uh, not email you. I put them as an announcement. And please make a copy of that and bring them to class. So Z sub alpha over two is 1.96 times the square root of P hat. We had um, 0.42 from the previous slide times Q hat 0.58 divided by divided by 1500. And here is your marginal error. I have four decimal places. Let me see what did I say in the note. I said we must round our marginal error to three decimal places. So uh, 0 0.0250 0 is the same as 0 0.025. Okay. 0 0 mm -hmm. Now, if you round it to four decimal places, your uh, the answer that I have given you on the homework might be a little bit different from your answer, but please check the PowerPoint and see the number of decimal places that I'm talking about. But you are not going to, I'm not going to deduct any point from you. So here is your marginal error, 0 0.0250. Any question? Not if you have done home, what is it? Not seeing anything in the chat so far, okay. Professor. If you have started your homework for 7.1 and 7.2, you see that the process that I'm explaining right now is similar to 7.1 and 7.2. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go, and here is P hat, 0 .40, 0 .42, 0 0.42. I'm going to add marginal error to it. At the same time, on the same line, I'm going to take it away. Okay, the formula again, confidence interval formula again. So P, which is in the middle, is going to be less than P hat was 0.42 plus marginal error. P larger than 0.42 minus marginal error. So 0.42 plus 0 0.0250, 0 0.42 minus 0 0.0250. Uh, so uh, P hat, a uh, P, Population proportion less than 0 0.4450, greater than 0 0.3950. Now, since we are dealing with proportion, which is percentage that belong, uh, percentage of population that belong to category that we are interested in. Uh, so we have to change the answer for proportion always to percent, just proportion. We just change the answer for proportion to percent, not for the mean not for variance, not for a standard deviation. Any question? Let's look at example number two. 35% of all adult American are regular voters. A random sample of 250 adults in a medium-sized college town was surveyed, and it is found that 110 were regular voters. Find the 90% confidence interval of the population proportion of the regular voters and comment on your result. <coughs> First of all, what type of measures we are working with? What type of measure of population we are working with, or what is my parameter? Proportion. On the second sentence, gives me, second sentence gives me sample size 250, N, and out of those 50, 110 were regular voters. That's my X. And in the first sentence, it says 35% of, of adult Americans are regular voters. This is percentage from, this is population proportion from previous study. The book, when they give us, to, uh, they give us, uh, when they give us 
population measure, they give us one answer. But when we are finding population measure, we find we find that in the, as an interval. Later on, when you take more and more classes, you learn how to find that one number, like 35%. That 35% is P from the previous study. We want to find an interval for or for our own information. So n is 250, x is 110. Okay. I can use n and x to find p hat. p hat is x over n, 110 over 250, which is 0.44. q hat is 1 minus p hat, 0.56. Any question? So the first sentence talking about population proportion from previous study. Now I have to find a popular interval for population proportion for my study and compare my result with the previous result. Okay. Okay, you need to find alpha. This is from the previous slide. Alpha is, uh, first of all, let's check n p hat, n times p hat. n times p hat, n was 250, p hat, 0.44, 110 larger than five. n times q, sorry, n times q hat. N times Q hat is 250 times 0. 0.56, 1400 larger than 5. Okay. Now, alpha, 1 minus confidence level, 0. 0.90, 0. 0.10. We need Z sub alpha over 2. Inverse norm of 1 minus alpha over 2. Inverse norm of 1 minus 0. 0.10 over 2, 1.64. <coughs> So as you see here, my Z sub alpha over two is rounded to two decimal places. If you round your Z sub alpha over two to four decimal places, then your interval is a little bit different from my interval, okay? Any question? I have a comment, Professor. So okay. this is something that is in the video for this, and it's something that you encounter also in chapter six. But if you're using the calculator to find your, your confidence coefficients, your Z sub alpha for 90, you're going to get 1.64. The book is going to tell you that it's 1.65, OK? because the book uses a little bit of a different procedure. If you're using the table, you're also going to get that. The key also uses that. Okay, so if you used 1.64, you're not wrong. Um, we have the answer for both, so don't worry. You're allowed to use either one. So if you memorized it from the book as 1.65, you're fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Because I gave 1.65 in section 7.1, yes. There's an extra zero on the slide, somebody said, for the product of NQ, I believe somebody said. Let me see. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it has to be 14. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, forty. So, yes. So for if you want to memorize this of alpha over 2 from section uh, 1.7.1, 1. that's fine. But I strongly recommend that you use inverse norm formula. Okay? And I'm going to send you a handout which has some information about chapter 7 and chapter 8. For this coming exam next week, you only need chapter 7 material, mm -hmm. which is the first page. I'm going to put them in the announcement. But if you make copies of all the pages that that handouts has, 
it will be useful for you in chapter seven, chapter eight, and I think chapter nine. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's uh, plug our numbers back in our formula. This is our confidence interval for proportion. I'm going to find marginal error first. 1.64 times rad 0.44 times 0.56 rad divided by all this. This is a product divided by N. So the product divided by N goes, the whole thing goes under the radical sign, except Z goes outside the radical. So mm -hmm. 0.44 times 0.56 divided 250 that multiplied by 1.46, it is, that's my marginal error. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna add this marginal error. I think um, uh, I'm gonna, I think, let me see uh, if I kept my marginal error as four, then I'm gonna change change my comment on comment. three decimal places to make it to four. Let's see what. Well, I kept it as four. You kept it four. four. So I'm going to go and change my comments to four. So okay. I added to my P hat 0.44, the marginal error on the right side. Mm -hmm. and on the left side, I took it away from my P hat. Mm -hmm. So when you add marginal error to P hat, you get 0.4915. When you take it away from the P hat, you get 0.3885. Then um, uh, when we are calculating uh, proportion, uh, our final result has to be changed to percent. Mm -hmm. Any question? Not seeing anything in the chat, Professor. I think we're fine. Okay. Let me... Okay, now I said that. Um, Comment sorry, on your. Sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. So that's our confidence interval for proportion. And in the last sentence, last sentence, I said, "Comment on your result." Let me remove this bar. There are so many bars here. Okay. Uh, you have to comment on your result. What result? In the first sentence, I said 35% of adult American are regular voters. This is from the previous study. But we found that between 38.85% to 49.15% of adult American are regular voters. So I'm comparing this, these numbers with 35%. So what is our conclusion is that uh, more adults American are regular voters now. They vote more than previous times. Any question? Okay. Okay, example number three, I'm just going to explain example number three. I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to say what I have given you. Uh, example number three is similar to example number two. Okay, it has been reported that 20.4% of incoming freshmen indicated that they will major in business or related field. Okay, this first sentence is giving you information that it exists. So this is previous information. Now our work. A random sample of 400 incoming college freshmen was asked their preference. 95 percent and 95 replied that they were considering a business as a major. Okay, now our work is we we have a sample size of 400, only 95 of them said they're going to be a business major. We want to find, 
confidence. It says estimate the true proportion of freshman business majors with 95% confidence. Now, basically, this part, in, instead of saying find 95% confidence interval for proportion, sometimes we say find true proportion with 95% confidence. It's the same thing. You are finding 95% confidence interval for proportion. Then you have to compare your answer, whatever you end up with, with 20.4% from previous result. Parameter is proportion. N is 400, X is 95. You calculate P hat, Q hat, and so forth. Here, a confidence level is 0.95. Do you see that everything is similar to the previous problem? So for our research, uh, population proportion is between 19.58% to 27.92%. Uh, if I compare this interval with the previous in, uh, confidence interval that they have given me, <laughs> does your Interval contains 20.4%. Yes, uh, the 20.4% is between these two numbers. So you say yes. Any question? Okay. Um, in section 7.1, I talk about when you are doing a research, you have to know how many, what is your sample size? What should your sample size be? Okay, what should your sample size be? And we, I gave you a formula for N in section 7.1. And I said, whatever answer you get, you have to round up. You have similar formula for this section. You have, when you are doing research on proportion, you have to know what is your sample size. Sometimes the research is new. Sometimes the research has been done before, but you want to do another research. So the formula for minimum sample size is P hat times Q hat times a fraction Z sub alpha over two over E, the fraction raised to the power of two. E is marginal error. E is your marginal error, and you have to round up to get a whole number because N is sample size, number of people or number of items. You cannot have a decimal as your answer. No matter what the decimal part of N is, you have to round up. <coughs> a researcher wishes to be 95% confident that his estimate of true proportion of the individuals who travel overseas is within 0.04 of true proportion. Find the sample size necessary. So you are finding N. Okay. So one more time. A researcher wishes to be 95% confident that his estimate of true proportion, real proportion of the individual who travel overseas is within 0.04 of true proportion. Find the sample size necessary. Now, there is a sentence that uh, they have done some research about this. So let's read it. In a prior study, a sample of 200 people showed that 80 percent, uh, 80 traveled overseas, not 80 percent. Out of 200 people, 80, only 80 travel overseas. You need the sample size from the previous study. Because what was the formula for N? N was yes. P hat times, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
n was uh, p hat times q hat mm. times z sub alpha over 2 over mm. e raised to the power of 2. You have to figure out p hat and q hat. To do that, you need some information from previous study. Either they should give you a p hat and q hat from the previous study, or they should give you a sample size from the previous study and x from the previous study. Parameter is proportion P. Okay. By the way, before I go on to the next slide. Okay. You want, he wants, okay. The researcher wants to be, to be 95% confident that his estimate of true proportion of individual be within 0.04 of true proportion. So any number that comes after the word within is your marginal error, is your E. Any number after the word within is your E, okay? And your confidence level is 95%. E is 0.04, the number that comes after the word within. I mentioned that in section 7.1 is your E. From previous study, N is 200, X is 80. So N is P hat times Q hat times this of alpha over 2 over E, only the fraction raised to the power of 2. Now P hat is X over N. AD over 200.40, Q hat is 1 minus 0 0.40, 0 0.60. We're going to Z sub alpha over 2. What is it? Uh, first of all, you need the alpha, 1 minus confidence level 0 0.95, 0 0.05. Z sub alpha over 2 is inverse norm of 1 minus alpha over 2. Inverse norm of 1 minus 0 0.25 divided by 2, 1.96. Plug everything in, so you get 576.24. So we're going to round up. So N would be 577. Okay. Now, I want to uh, take a note here. If, okay, I want you to pay attention to this. If they don't give you any information from previous study, like in the prior study, uh, N was 200, X was 80. If the study is fresh, like you are the one that doing the research from scratch and you know previous study has been done, you let P hat and Q hat be 0.50, 50%. So P hat would be 0.50, Q hat would be 0.50 also, 50%, 50%. So if uh, you don't have any information from previous study, that is, if the study is fresh, you let P hat and Q hat be both of them, 50%, 0 0.50, 0 0.50. You put 0 0.50 and 0 0.50 here. Any question? Okay, here it is. If there is no information regarding N and X from the previous study, then P hat and Q hat both going to be 0 0.50. The, I think there is a question or questions on your homework that... There are. There are. There, there are. are some questions where that happened. Okay, good. Any question? Not seeing any in the chat so far. Okay, good. So... Um, <clears throat> If some of you had question on finding Z sub alpha over two from section 7.1, we did 
that in this mm -hmm. section also. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> Z sub alpha over two is confidence coefficient. <clears throat> Sorry, let me take some water. Z sub alpha over two is confidence coefficient. We use Z sub alpha over two for proportion. When parameter is proportion, we also use Z sub alpha over two when the parameter is mean and sigma given. Mean and when sigma is given, 7.1. When parameter is mean, and sigma is not given, instead S given. S is sample standard deviation. We use T sub alpha over two. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Any question? I'm not seeing anything here so far. Remember, after I'm done with section 7.4, I want you to ask me question about 7.1 and 7.2 because of your quiz on Friday. Confidence interval for variance and standard deviation. Okay, so when I'm doing a research and I want to find, figure out what is variance, what is the variance and the standard deviation for a population, you have to find its confidence interval. Now, when you're working uh, with variance and standard deviation, we have a new distribution. So far, we look at Z distribution, which was standard normal distribution, standard normal distribution. We abbreviate it to Z distribution. Then we look at T distribution, which is similar to the Z distribution, uh, but in section 7.2, but we had a family of curves. Now, when we are working with variance and standard deviation, we have a new distribution. It's called chi-square distribution. This is not chi. This is chi. That's a Greek letter chi. The chi-square distribution must be used to calculate confidence interval for variance and standard deviation. Chi. The chi-square variable is similar to the T variables because uh, we are dealing with family of curves. We, only, we don't have one curve like Z. Z has one curve, but T has family of curves. To pick a correct curve, we use degree of freedom. Chi-square variable is like a T variable. It has a family of curves, and we pick the correct curve using degree of freedom. The symbol for chi square, this is the symbol for chi square. That's a Greek letter chi. So chi square, that's the symbol chi square, Greek letter chi. Measures of population, like Greek letters. <clears throat> Here we have a Greek letter, chi square. So Greek letter chi pronounced chi. <laughs> now, chi square variable cannot be negative. Why? because chi-square distribution is a positively skewed distribution. It's a skewed to the right, positively skewed distribution.
At about 100 degrees of freedom, the chi-square distribution becomes somewhat symmetrical. So around degree of freedom of 100, the positively skewed distribution becomes bell-shaped. Still, the area under chi-square distribution, the area under the whole chi-square distribution is 100%, which is 1. Here, we are looking at several um, chi-square distribution, like the blue, the light blue curve is chi-square distribution when degree of freedom is 4. Remember, degree of freedom is n minus 1. And the brown curve is chi-square distribution for degree of freedom 9. n here is 10. Then the gray one is chi-square distribution when degree of freedom is 15. n is 16. <clears throat> and so forth. As n gets larger and larger and larger, uh, that positively skewed curve gets closer and closer uh, to the bell-shaped curve. What is the confidence interval for variance and a standard deviation? What is the formula? This formula is a little bit different from uh, the other three formulas. Sigma square is population variance. I think in the classroom last time, I gave you a table and I put uh, the name of the four measures, symbol for the uh, population and symbol for uh, sample. Do you remember anyone? The students who were in class last time, do you remember that table? I'm going to send you that uh, table that I put on the board for you. You had mean, va proportion, variance, and a standard deviation. I gave you the sample for mm -hmm. symbol for population, symbol for samples for these four measures. Okay, let's see. Population variance, sigma square is less than n minus 1 times s to the power of 2. s to the power of 2 is sample. Stand, uh, sample variance divided by chi square left <coughs> and sigma square larger than n minus 1 times s to the power of 2 divided by chi square right. Yes, chi square right goes on the left side and chi square left goes on the right side. There is no typos. You will see why. Degree of freedom DF is N minus 1. So that's population variance. Uh, the formula is not similar to the last three formula for mu, the two formula for the mu and the formula for the P proportion. Now, if I take square root of the middle, left and right, I have confidence interval for standard deviation. So Population is standard deviation less than the square root of the left side, larger than square root of the right side. <coughs> so s to the power of two is <coughs> s to the power of two is sample variance. Sigma s square is population variance. Chi-square left, chi-square right are confidence coefficient. The program that I want you to download using Shana's YouTube video or the other YouTube video that I have provided, it will give you the values for chi-square left and right. Assumptions. The sample should be selected randomly the population must be normally distributed. Finding the, okay, a procedure for finding confidence coefficient. 
you find your alpha. Alpha is one minus confidence level. Okay. To find chi-square right, you enter, you go to the program. I will show you in a minute how to do it. After you download your program, then um, after you download the program, then you will see it. Is inverse chi-square of alpha over two and degree of freedom. That's chi-square right. Chi-square left is inverse chi-square of you program inverse chi-square of one minus alpha over two and degree of freedom. Chi-square left is a smaller than chi-square right. Round to four decimal places. Okay. This is how to enter um, programs in calculator. This is the, the steps that Shana, this is the program, only four lines. One, two, three, then double colon, that's YouTube video, okay? Shana has a YouTube video for you, and this is another YouTube video, tells you how to download this program. You need to download this program. You're gonna get five points extra credit by either watching Shauna's YouTube video or click on this YouTube video and download this program onto your calculator. And there also, um, there are confidence coefficient calculator online. You, you can use this while you're at home, okay? I have given you the link. If you click on this link, it gives you inverse function. It gives you inverse Z, which is inverse norm. It gives you inverse T, and it gives you inverse chi-square, and it gives you inverse F distribution. We're going to talk about this in the next chapter. So, so this is a link to a calculator to give you inverse Z, which is inverse norm, inverse T, inverse chi S4. Okay. Find the value for chi S4 right and chi S4 left for a 90% confidence level when N is 37. So let me just give you a graph. This is chi S4 curve, which is positively skewed curve. Okay, I'm just showing you graphically, then I give you the values. This red line that you see here, or this point, is the location of chi-square right, confidence coefficient, chi-square right. And that point on the left is location of chi-square left. The Area of each yellow region is alpha over two. That's why we need alpha over two, alpha over two, alpha over two. And the area of this white region is one minus alpha, one minus alpha. Okay. This is the, when using any program, please pay attention, click the program, choose one or execute, okay? And highlight the name, only stay on the execute. When you see the name of the program, such as inverse chi-square, just press enter, then give the value of degree of freedom and area. Okay. <laughs> First of all, N was 37, correct? N was 37, so degree of freedom is N minus 1, 37 minus 1, 36. Okay. Your alpha, 1 minus confidence level, the confidence level that I gave you was 90%. 90%. So 
alpha is 1 minus confidence level of 1 minus 0 0.90, 0 0.10. Chi-square right is inverse chi-square program, inverse chi-square of alpha over 2 and degree of freedom. Okay. Let me stop sharing and I want to show you my calculator window. Okay, now, do you see the key program? You click on this, you stay. First of all, when you are entering the program, you highlight new. Okay, Shauna will tell you about this. But I already have the program inverse chi square, inverse T, and inverse L. So I click, let me quit one. Click the key program. Only after you have the program, highlight execute. Then select any program you want. We want inverse chi score. So I highlight one. I press enter. Then it says program inverse chi score. The blinker is coming. I press enter. You have to press enter to tell the calculator, yes, I'm working on this program. Then it says area right. Area right for chi square right is alpha over two. Alpha over two. My alpha was 0.10 divided by two. 0.10 divided by two. Alpha was 0.10. Alpha over two. Then I press enter. Then he asking me about DF, degree of freedom. My degree of freedom was 36, Shana. 36. Then you press enter. That's chi square right. Any question? Not seeing anything, Professor. So. The area was alpha for chi square right. Hold on a second. Alpha over two. Yeah, alpha over two. Chi square right was inverse chi square alpha over two and degree of freedom. Okay. So I enter 0.10 divided by 2, degree of freedom was 36. I end up with 50.9985. Okay. I'm going to show you how to find chi square left. Same procedure. Chi square left is inverse chi square of 1 minus alpha over 2 and degree of freedom. Let's go to our calculator. 1 minus, let me show you, 1 Inverse chi square of 1 minus 0.10 divided by 2, and degree of freedom is 36. So I'm going to go to program. I click program. I, I'm not on the top row. I just stay on execute. Don't go to the, do not highlight edit. If you highlight edit, even if you don't do anything, you change the program. So stay on execute, choose the program you want. We want uh, inverse chi sword, press enter. Then it says program chi sword, press enter again to say yes. Then area right, you say one minus alpha over two, 0.10 divided by two, one minus alpha over two, Press enter, ask for degree of freedom. N minus 1, 37 minus 1, 36. Then you press enter. That's chi square left. Question.
I'm going to look at uh, more of way, more example of finding chi-square right and chi-square left. Then you have enough uh, practice to find. Uh, but then you, when you download, you're going to have your own practice. Okay. Example two, find the 95% confidence interval for variance and standard deviation for the lifetime of batteries if an SRS, simple random sample, of 20 batteries has a standard deviation of 1.7 months, as some variable is normally distributed. <clears throat> so we are finding in the problem of this section, I'm going to ask you find confidence interval. Major, all of the problem, 99% of the problem says find, let's say 90% confidence interval or 95% confidence interval or 99% confidence interval. And they're all in section 7.1 and 7.3, sometimes they ask you to find sample size, the N. Okay. <clears throat> let's see what they have given us. First of all, what is our parameter? Variance and a standard deviation, measure of population. Variance and a standard deviation. Variance sigma squared, uh, standard deviation sigma. What is 20? Sample size N. What is 1.7? Is standard deviation for those 20 sample. S. S, standard deviation of this 20 batteries. That's S. Symbol for a standard deviation of sample is S. <coughs> that is a formula for confidence interval for variance. Sigma square is less than n minus one times s to the power of two divided by chi square left. Sigma square larger than n minus one times s to the power of two divided by chi square right. Okay. We have to find um, chi square left and right to put it in our formula. We know n. 20. We know S, 1.7. We need the denominators, car square right and left. And by the way, N minus 1 is 19. Alpha, 1 minus confidence level, 1 minus 0 0.95, 0 0.05. Chi square right is inverse chi square of Alpha over two, you don't have to memorize these formulas for Z sub alpha over two, T sub alpha over two, chi square right and, right, right and left. I'm going to give you a handout in the announcement. That announcement has information about chapter seven, eight, and nine. Eight, seven, and nine. You can print the whole thing. Or for this coming quiz, you need only the first page, which you don't have to print it because it's not in-class quiz. But during the in-class exam, you need all the pages. So let's see. Let's plug in inverse chi square of alpha 0 0.05 divided by 2 degree of freedom n minus 1, 19. Let me share my screen. 0 0.05 computer screen. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, you are. You are. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. No, I'm not. I didn't stop sharing. You are, are you seeing my calculator? Your... Yes, we can. Okay. So you go to program, stay on execute. I need inverse chi square. Press enter. Then press enter again. Area right, a 0.05 divided by 2. 
because it's alpha over two. Alpha was 0 0.05 divided by two. Do not write, put the result, just put alpha over two, 0 0.05 divided by two. The degree of freedom was 19. Press enter. That's your chi-square right. Okay. 32.8523. Let's look at chi-square left. Chi-square left area is 1 minus alpha over 2, 1 minus 0 0.05. So I have to click the program again, execute number 1. Then program chi-square, you have to press enter. You cannot enter 0 0.05 divided by but 0.05 divided by two where the blinker is. You enter the information that they ask you. Blinker, you just say press enter. Area right. This is for I'm finding chi square left now. One minus 0 0.05 divided by two. Press enter. Then it asks you degree of freedom. You say 19. That's chi square left. That was chi square right, inverse chi square of alpha over 2, degree of freedom 19. Chi square left, inverse chi square of 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2, degree of freedom 19. Any question? Okay. Not so far. Okay. So, we saw that uh, when I show you the calculator, chi square right became 32.8523. Now chi square left is inverse chi square of 1 minus alpha over 2 and degree of freedom, 8.9065. Now the formula, it is in your formula sheet for sigma square. This is in your formula sheet. So we're gonna we have everything to plug in. We have n, we have s, we have chi square left and right. Twenty minus one times one point seven s to the power of two, one point seven to the power of two, divided by. You put the chi square left on the right side. Eight point nine zero six five, the same numerator. Then you put chi square right on the left. N minus uh, one was 19. So you get, that's the standard. When I entered this, the whole thing on the right side, it became 6.1652. So sigma square less than 6.1692. Sigma square greater than 1.6714. Enter the whole thing in your calculator, you get the numbers on the left and right. Now, if I take the square root of all three parts, I end up with standard confidence interval for a standard deviation. So that's 95% confidence interval for population variance. Let's take the square root of Middle, right, and left, you get sigma, which is population standard deviation, less than 2.4830, greater than 1.2982928. That's confidence, 95% confidence interval for population standard deviation. <clears throat> okay. I mentioned that in class last time, the meaning of, let's say, 95% confidence interval. What does that mean? We are 95% sure that the actual value of, let's say, sigma square is between these two numbers. There is a 5% chance the actual value of sigma square is not between these two numbers. We cannot find everything 100%. Nothing is 100%. So there is an error here. So we are 95% sure of our result that the actual value of sigma square is between these two numbers. There's a 5% chance is not. The same thing with confidence interval for a standard deviation. 
we are 95% sure the actual value of sigma is between 1.2928 and 2.4830. And there is a 5% chance that actual value is not between these two numbers. Any question? Not seeing anything so far. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next example. Find the 99% confidence interval for the variance and standard deviation of the weight of 25 gallon containers of motor oil if an SRS, simple random sample of 14 containers, has a variance of 3.2 square ounces. Assume variable is normally distributed. Okay. What is parameter? Measure of population. What is parameter? Variance and a standard deviation. Sigma square and sigma. So... <clears throat> Okay, what is N here? N here is 14, not 25. 25, just explanation of what our explanation for these 14 containers. So N is 14. Please do not mix it. Don't write N as 25. N is 14. 25 is the capacity of the container. It's Contain a 25 right. gallon container. Yeah. 20... And you have 14 of those. Yeah. You have 14 containers where they each of them is 25 gallons. Okay. So 25 gallon is explain description of those containers. So N is 14. What is 3.2? 3.2 is the variance for those 14 containers. So variance for these 14 samples. What is the symbol for variance of sample? S to the power of two. So S to the power of two is 3.2. In the previous example, I gave you a standard deviation of the sample. I gave you S in the previous example. In this example, I'm giving you S to the power of two. You have to know the symbols. Okay, so S to the power of two. I put a table on the board, on the left side of the board, front board, last time. In the announcement that I'm going to send you this uh, Procedure of finding z sub alpha over 2, t sub alpha over 2, and chi square left and right. I'm going to send you another link uh, with the symbols for sample and the symbols for population. Okay. Okay. I have given you s to the power of 2. In this chapter and next chapter and chapters after that, you have to be, you want to know the symbols and the value of the symbol, you have to put correct, pick correct symbol. Okay, the formula, confidence interval for population variance, sigma square, this is sample variance. So the same formula as before, let's find chi square left and right. Degree of freedom is uh, uh, N minus 1, N is 14, degree of freedom is 13, S to the power of 2 is 3.2. Does anyone wants to me showing you the program inverse chi-square with the calculator? Anyone? If you want to see it again, have your thumbs up and Shauna will tell me and I'm going to show it to you again. Because I cannot see... Uh, Nothing, Shana? Yeah, right now. I don't think anybody's there yet. There what? I don't think anybody's um, doing this work yet. 
No, I know that they, mm. they want me to show the calculator window again. Oh, do you need to see? I want, yeah. Does anybody wants to see the calculator window for finding chi-square left and right? We have some, we have one thumbs up in the chat. So maybe you better show it. We okay. have you, go ahead and show it again. Okay. So alpha is one minus confidence level, one minus 0 0.99, 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's our alpha. Chi square right is inverse chi square of alpha over two and degree of freedom. Okay. Um, alpha 0.01 divided by two, degree of freedom 13. Did I stop sharing? Yes, you did. Okay. There's your calculator, we can okay. see it now. So click the program, next to WARS key, execute one, program inverse chi square, press enter, Area 0 0.01 divided by two because the confidence level was 0.99, one minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01. So alpha 0 0.01 divided by two, degree of freedom was what? 13. That's quite a swear right. Let's find the um, chi square left. You click the program again. Execute inverse chi square. Program inverse chi square. The blinker telling you yes or no. You click enter to say yes. Area right. You say one minus point oh one divided by two. This is one minus alpha. Divided by two, degree of freedom 13. That's chi square left. So I have shown you three different examples of finding chi square and chi square left and chi square right. Okay. Okay, so chi square right became 29.8195, chi square left, inverse chi square program of one minus alpha over 20 degree of freedom, one minus 0 0.01 divided by two, comma, degree of freedom 13, became 3.560. <laughs> now we're gonna plug everything in the formula. Numerator on the left side and right side are the same. N, 14 minus one times only 3.2. You are not gonna raise 3.2 to the power of two because 3.2 is S to the power of two. On the right and on the left. So pay attention. Sometimes we give you S, sample standard deviation. Sometimes we give you S to the power of two. Sample variance. How do you know is a sample? Because it's in the same sentence as sample size. Variance of those 14 is 3.2. So S to the power of two is 14. So I put chi square left on the right side, chi square right on the left side in the denominator. <coughs> Fourteen minus one is thirteen. I put the whole thing in the fraction on the left and on the right. The whole thing. So sigma square is less than eleven point six six nine zero greater than one point three nine five one, and that's a ninety nine percent confidence interval for population variance. We are ninety nine percent sure that the actual value of sigma square is between these two numbers, there is a 1% chance actual value of sigma square is not. 
Then I'm going to take the square root of left, right, and the middle. And I end up with the confidence interval for population standard deviation. <laughs> okay uh, here uh, I have shown you the procedure of finding confidence coefficient inverse chi-square table G If you don't want to add the program, you can use this table for now, okay? But during the exam, I'm not going to examine class. I'm not going to give you the table. Just please uh, download the program, and you're going to get five points extra credit when you show it to me in class, uh, five points extra credit. And it's much easier to deal with table. <laughs> okay. So I'm done with section 7.4. Any question from anybody? About 7.4 and 7.3. Feel free to open your mic if you'd like to speak. Yes, please. Any of you. Okay, let me have five minutes break. I'm going to come back around 2 o'clock or two, let's say, let's come back around 2 or 5. Okay. Then if you have any question about 7.1 and 7.2, please ask. Okay. Okay, 7.2, problem number three. Let me share my screen. Predicted high temperature for a day in the late May for a random sample of U.S. cities are listed here. Estimate um, the mean population uh, high temperature with 90% confidence. Okay, so yeah. this is your samples. Okay, what <laughs> is, first of all, I always write what, I always ask, what is the parameter here? Here, the parameter is um, mean, mu, okay? And what is the definition of my variables here that I have all these numbers that I have given you? Predicted high temperature yeah, a day in late May. <clears throat> I entered this raw data in my calculator, okay? So I press, um, hold on a second, where is my calculator? Where is my calculator? Okay, I'm just looking for my calculator. <laughs> I, okay, what I did was I click the stat key, okay? You're I... not sharing your calculator screen. We're still seeing the... Okay, so let me share my calculator screen. So... There you go. I click the stat key. I highlighted edit, edit, okay? And then um, let me clear all this list. Let me click the stat key again. Then edit, on top edit, then I go and clear list the, all three lists, four, list one, comma, list two, comma, list three. Then it says done. Then I went and enter my raw data. So nice. I click a stat key again, edit, edit. Um, under list one, I enter my raw data. 60. 60. Okay, can you read it for me, Shana? I can, yes. Okay. 88. 88? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. 73. 73. 86. 103. 79. 67. Okay. 72. 72. 89. 88. 88. Yes. 76. 76. 87. And that's all of them. 87. Okay. Yeah. So I enter my raw data in this one. So stat, edit, edit. Then I'm going to quit this window, click the stat key. This time I'm going to go to on the top row, highlight calculate. Then under calculate, I pick one war stat, list one. I enter my raw data under list one, list one. Frequency list, I'm going to ignore it. I don't have any frequency list. Calculate. Here, that's my mean for sample. Okay. Then, I'm, we're going to wait here. So, copy the X bar. X bar is 80.6667. From this window, the only other thing that you copy is S sub X, nothing X, nothing else. <laughs> S sub X, 11.7422, okay? X bar and S sub X, no sigma sub X, S sub X. Okay, let me uh, stop. Did I stop sharing? Yes, you have. Okay. So, we want to find confidence interval for the mean. Now, <clears throat> when I ask you to find confidence interval for the mean, you have two different routes. Z sub alpha over two routes and T sub alpha over two routes. You have to, in order for you to figure out which route you are going, you have to ask two questions. Is sigma known? No, I didn't give you any sigma. There is no mention of sigma or standard deviation of population. No. Is n greater than or equal to 30? No. n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n is 12? No. When the answer to both question is no, we're going to use T distribution. Okay. Let me show you. Uh, I'm going to show you the flow chart uh, in a minute. So we're going to use T distribution. Okay. We're going to use T distribution. So this is confidence interval for the mean when sigma is unknown. Okay. Any question? I'm not done. Okay. So you have X bar 80.6667. You have your S from that window, which I said S sub X, 11.7422. Do not pick sigma. Do not mm -hmm. pick sigma. You have to choose S. From that window, never, never pick sigma. Always pick S and X bar. And we have N12. Now we have to find T sub alpha over 2. T sub alpha over 2 is inversity of 1 minus alpha over 2 and degree of freedom. First of all, degree of freedom is N minus 1. There are N is 12 minus 1, 11. Alpha is 1 minus confidence level. 1 minus 0 0.90, 0 0.10, okay? So 1 minus alpha over 2 and degree of freedom. 1 minus 0.10 divided by 2 and degree of freedom, 11. Let me stop sharing and show you um, 
inverse uh, t sub alpha over two. So you go to distribution, university, item number four, area one minus 0.10 divided by two, degree of freedom, 11. Highlight pace. Press enter, <clears throat> 1.7959. So if, uh, when I talked to students last time in class, there were only one student that had TI-83, and that was Gabby. Mm -hmm. So uh, TI-83 doesn't have inverse T in the calculator. If you have inverse T, if you have 83, you have to come to me um, <clears throat> in, what do you call it? Come to my office, office hour. Office hours next week, uh, which is Wednesday before the exam and uh, download inverse T. But I if you to... don't have it, you can also use the link that she provided. So you can still do the homework. Yes. The link use, that I use show the you. The link that she provided with the slides you'll be able to get it from the website calculator yeah, there. i told you there is a website which gives you inverse z which is inverse norm inverse t inverse chi square inverse f i think it was in 7.3 i think lesson you so put it yeah you put it in a couple of the lessons if you have trouble finding it <laughs> because there might be people watching from your other class later um, look for that link in the lesson. If you can't find it, email me and I'll be happy to direct you. But you should be able to complete the homework even if your calculator doesn't have that. So here we end up with um, Z, uh, T sub alpha over to 1.7952. Now we are ready to plug in what we have. We have X bar, here it is. We have T sub alpha over to 1.7959 times S 11.7422 divided by rat 12. The product of the T with the fraction is marginal error. So I'm going to calculate marginal error. I calculate the marginal error. My marginal error became uh, the product of 1.7959 with the fraction. And it became 6.0875. Then I added the marginal error to my mean. Yeah. Marginal error plus mean, then mean minus marginal error. So the mean, mu, mean of population is less than 86.7542, greater than 74.5792 less than 86.75, larger than 74.78. Okay, let me show you the flow chart that I was talking about. Okay, let, any question? Do you still have question on three? I don't know who asked the question, this question. No. Okay, let me stop sharing. Okay, are you seeing 7.2 lesson? Okay. Are you seeing the flow chart? Shana? Yes, we can. Okay. So every time I'm asking you to find confidence interval for mean, mean, you have two different routes, as I mentioned, Z route or T route. 
uh, to figure out which route you are taking, you have to ask this question. Is sigma known? Is n greater than or equal to 30? When you ask, is sigma known? If your answer is yes <clears throat> to that question, you're going to use the formula that I gave you in section 7.1. Mu is less than x bar plus plus or minus mu equal to x bar plus or minus z sub alpha over two times sigma over rad n. Z sub alpha over two rad. If the answer to is sigma known is no, you're going to ask the second question is n greater than or equal to 30? If the answer is yes, you can still use the Z sub alpha over two formula, section 7.1, but you're going to replace sigma with S. If the answer to both questions is no, you're going to use T sub alpha over T sub alpha over two formula, the formula in section 7.2. You can add this flow chart. You can draw this flow chart in your formula sheet. Okay. I have never done this, but you can add this flow chart to your formula sheet and bring it to class during in class exam. When when you're taking the exam or the quiz for these yes. sections, she wants to see you ask these questions. So you write a little note, write yes or no and then write what test you're using. You'll see me do that in the video. You've seen her do that in the solutions. But the reason she's bringing it up is so you know which interval to use. Yes. This is These one of those sections. If you make a, if you find that your answer is different from the key before you figure out your decimal places and all that, make sure you use the correct interval because they're very close. And this flow chart is all is also used in chapter eight. So uh, this flow chart is very very important. Add it to your formula sheet. This is used every time that we work with the mean, mean, mu. Okay. <clears throat> so add it to your formula sheet. Any question? And we do have, let me see what somebody said. There is a question or something in the chat. Um, let me scroll down. Oh, no, somebody just said that they could see your, your slides. I don't think okay. there's another okay. question so. they can see <laughs> in the... <laughs> Okay. Okay, let's see. I think I had my 10.2 lesson up. Mm. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, let me quickly explain what's going on with 10.2. I'm just going to explain to you briefly. Okay, 10.2 is a scatter plot and linear regression. Okay, what is a scatter plot? Uh, I'm, we're going to give you a set of ordered pairs. Set of ordered pairs. Like here. I'm going to say, well, x is 43, y is 128, x is 48, y is... Can you stop it? <clears throat> sure. Shana, stop um, the video. Yeah. 